Public toilets can be pretty gross, and you may not have any alternative but to use them. Sometimes you get in one and think, how the hell am I going to get through this without contracting dysentery? My name's Siren, and I'm here to guide you through flesh eating bacteria and bad etiquette. start with the guys toilet going experience and I'm gonna end with the girls. But of course there's the rules that apply to both. Starting from the start, opening the door. Generally when you walk into a bathroom it's a push door. And that can simply be bypassed by leaning on the door. Once you've entered the premises, which urinal do you take? Always use the ends first. If people have already occupied the end urinals, you must leave one urinal in between yourself and them. If you don't, you may be regarded with suspicion. Only after every second urinal is filled can you use the other ones. If you're not comfortable with the urinals presented, or just not comfortable with urinals, just use the cubicle. If you're confronted with a pee wall, same rules apply. Ends first, middle last. While you're at the urinal, there's some rules. No eye contact. While you're standing there, you've got a limited range of vision. Straight ahead or straight down, that's all you get. That is all you get. Peripheral vision is not allowed. Contrary to popular belief among women, guys don't size each other up. Especially at a urinal. That's what change rooms are for. That covers urination, but what if you need to go number two? People simply say, don't do it. And it does conflict with good bathroom etiquette, with all the bad smells and sound effects. But this is a survival guide, and when you've got to go, you got to go. So depending on where you are at the time, you'll have different options. If it's a place where people regularly visit, like a football match, you'll have more cubicle options. If it's a place where not a lot of people go, then the less choice you have. Once you get into a cubicle, there are three things you need to look for. A clean toilet, a usable lock on the door, and enough toilet paper. Once you've found a suitable cubicle, say that ten times fast, suitable cubicle, suitable cubicle, suitable cubicle. There are more factors to take into account. Like the locks on the door, which are incredibly germy. People are just wiped and gone to open the door, so I recommend using a sleeve or a piece of toilet paper to lock the door. And go ahead and do your business. So the flush button is one of the dirtiest things in the bathroom, so I recommend using your sleeve or a piece of toilet paper again. Fact. When you flush, an invisible six foot cloud of germs shoots up into the air and covers anything around. So if you can, I recommend closing the lid before you flush. So if you don't have the perfect toilet, here's some things you can do. If you have some splatter on the toilet seat, just wipe it up with the toilet paper. Urine is sterile, which means that it doesn't actually have any live germs in it. So it's probably the cleanest thing in the bathroom. If you're still feeling uncomfortable, layer the seat with some toilet paper. Your bum is the only thing that touches the toilet seat. Fact. It is more sanitary to kiss a toilet seat than somebody else on the mouth. And the toilet seat is one of the cleanest things in the bathroom with 100 bacteria per square inch. It might sound like a lot, but the sink is the dirtiest with over 100,000. That is a lot of bacteria. Kind of makes sense because your bum's just been in your pants all day and your hands have been touching all sorts of things. And unless you really try, it's almost impossible to get poo on the seat. And if you have a floater in the toilet, Flush. It's not that hard. And skid marks won't hurt you. You'll probably leave some on the way out anyway. So if you don't have a usable lock, either put your foot up against the door, or if you hear somebody come in, just make some noises and let them know you're there. quickly get into the cubicle next to you. Or if you've got some other type of paper on you, newspaper or tissues, use that instead. There is another more unpleasant way. I had to do this on an aeroplane last year. Yeah. Just hope they've got some powerful soap. Last thing you can do is the walk of shame. Pull up your pants and get on quickly. And washing your hands. This is the most dangerous part of the experience. As I said before, the sink is the dirtiest thing in the bathroom. Use the back of your hand or some knuckles to turn on the tap. Wet your hands, soap up, lather. I'm sure you've all done it before. I hope you've all done it before. But if there's no soap, use lots of hot water. The hotter the water, the more germs it kills. If you have any hot water, then use cold water. But scrub. If there's no water at all, go back to the cubicle and use the toilet water. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that last one. Drying your hands. This is quite simple. Don't dry your hands. Wipe them on your jeans or something. The paper towel dispenser is another one of the germiest places in the bathroom. Studies show that the air hair dryer is actually a bacteria dispenser that shoots them onto your hands and makes them germier than before. So as I said, use your jeans. When you go to exit the bathroom, you're usually confronted with a handle. Use the top of the handle, it has less traffic. Just imagine all the people that didn't wash their hands and used the handle before you. So that concludes the men's bathroom. Seeing as I'm not female, I had to do a bit of research. By research, I mean a Facebook status on the big issues that women face. I got varied results, and a lot of them were the same as men's issues, which we've already covered. But I did get one curious answer that piqued my interest. Pee on the seats. Although I don't have any personal experience in the female urination process, I thought it'd be quite difficult to miss seeing as they're sitting on top of the 
hug it just doesn't suck. Apparently there's a technique where women hover above the toilet seat to avoid touching it. I sort of understand the logic in this, but I thought there'd just be an easy way to do it. Like as I said before, use some toilet paper on the seats. Or buy one of these flushable toilet seat covers. It just seems to be a lot easier and cleaner. I also have another complaint from women. I can't believe I actually have to say this. Now I understand that women have menstrual cycles and it can make things a bit more difficult to get through. But that's what friends and partners are for. You know, take it out on them. When I was in high school there were some select students who decided to express themselves more artistically and they figured that the best way they could do it was to repaint the girls' cubicles in the grossest way possible. Let's just say it's not good for your feng shui. There are proper disposal bins that are there for a reason. Even this toilet had a bin. If you don't have a bin, then flush it. Alright? I'm finished with that. During my research I also found some girl etiquette. Girls are known for going to the toilets in pairs. And apparently that's not just a socialize. At high school there was a constant drone of the hand dryer going from the girls' toilets. I found out later that while one was in the toilet, the other would press the button to cover up the noises. This would make it a bit less awkward for the one in the toilet. Talking in the bathroom also seems to be more acceptable than in the guys' toilets. If you have a handbag with you, make sure you hang it on a hook or something. Fact. 30% of women's handbags were found with traces of fecal matter on the bottom. So there you go. So this is about as much as I know about the women's toilet going experience. And if I forgot to mention anything, then tell me in the comments. So this is the completion of my first survival guide. Show me if you liked it by using the thumbs down there. And if you have any ideas for some future guides, put them in the comments and I'll see what I can do. So I've got two ideas for my next video. Survival guide for a manly conversation from a non-manly. And a survival guide for Vietnam. Let me know which one you'd like to see. Click up here to see my Vietnam vlogs where I take you on my three week trip to Vietnam and Cambodia. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.